This is a case of a 65 year old lady who has undergone a cholecystectomy a year back for gallstones was referred to us with obstructive jaundice for favor of EUSSOS ERCP here I am seeing the entire length of the lower CBD and I could see a hypoechoic stricture which I am measuring in the bile duct which measured around one centimeter and we focused our energy to see the lower CBD as well as the lesion which was seen at the CHD. You can see hypoechoic thickening very well appreciated on the sonography. So on linear and radial both we can have lesion evaluated right up to the common hepatic duct. There is a small lymph node also which is pericolidocal. Patient has cholestatic symptoms. And therefore, we feel that this patient has a neoplastic activity in the upper bile duct, common hepatic duct junction. You can see a lymph node also, a hypoechoic node at 7 o'clock. So this is the advantage of EUS over other imaging modalities where you can target the primary lesion as well as the lymph node to get some more information on the pathology we are dealing with. Scope is withdrawn into the stomach. And we are evaluating the celiac artery area. We can see a lymph node there. So this area is imagined or evaluated more precisely from just beneath the cardia level. And that station allows us to see a lymph node in the celiac artery. So this patient has a node in the celiac artery. And this is the pancreas and the pancreatic duct which we are seeing through endoscopic ultrasound. You can see the MPD running in the body of the pancreas. So endosonography allows us to see the primary mass, the peritumorous lymph nodes, the celiac artery lymph node. And as we gently withdraw the scope, we can also evaluate the supradiaphragmatic portion of the perisophageal region. Now we have switched over to a linear echoendoscope. When you need an FNA, you can go ahead straight with a linear scope. You do not need to do a radial echoendoscopy. But for the convenience of our students, our fellows and all aspiring EUS enthusiasts, we feel that a radial followed by linear will give you a better orientation. You can see the needle in the primary tumor. So we are puncturing a hilar lesion, almost upper CBD lesion, EUS guided transduodenal FNA. Whenever tissue is the issue and is our referring consultant needs tissue diagnosis or if patient demands tissue diagnosis before a definitive major surgical intervention, we prefer EUS guided FNA for even higher cholangio lesions. You can see massively dilated IHBR in the left lobe of liver. This is transgastric evaluation. And this evaluation also allows us evaluation of the stricture from the stomach as well. This is EUS guided FNA you can see here this is transgastric FNA of the hilar lesion so you can have a transduodenal FNA a transgastric FNA if you desire tissue diagnosis patient also has multiple comorbidities such as poor cardiac function and underlying diabetes. Here you can see 
the cannulation of the bile duct. And cholangiogram showed dilated system, biliary sphincterotomy was performed, to accommodate since there is individual block of the right and the left ductal system here we are planning to place two plastic stents we always couple along with EUS FNA brush a cytology from the stricture so that we have adequate material for an attempt to tissue diagnosis. Both the FNA and cytology material from the brush are then sent for cytological examination. And it is our practice to dilate the stricture with a balloon. We prefer to use a 6 to 8 mm balloon for such tight sclerotic strictures. Which allows us subsequent placement of two 10 frame stents, one each in the right and the left ductal system at the primary intervention. Once the balloon dilatation has been achieved, we then cannulate the left ductal system. Here you can see the stricture length. And then we will try and place a guide wire. Now that you can see a guide wire has climbed up. And you can see the catheter going right deep into the left ductal system. Same process will be carried out. What you saw for the right ductal system. We are dilating the left ductal system with the help of a 10 French Sohendra type dilator, biliary dilator to prevent inadvertent bursting of a balloon due to the presence of one guide wire in the biliary system. After the dilatation is achieved We will proceed with placement of two 10 French plastic stents, one after the other. A series of movement which includes the torquing of the scope, the torquing of the body, clockwise and anti-clockwise along with elevator, pushing and pulling of the scope tip ensures the placement of a stent. So the first stent is placed which shows free flow of bile. It has been our experience that when you need to place two 10 friend stents on a pilot endotherapy intervention. Proper dilatation of stricture is mandatory. We also use silicon oil spray to facilitate smooth passage of stent 
with minimal friction with the previously placed tent. Here you can see the second stent in place and both the ductal systems are draining free 